while, Michelle, there's one thing that I hate, and I don't use the word hate like this. When I hate being lied to, especially by my own wife. I'm not lying to you, Richard. You want, did he just raise your voice at me in my eyes? Did you, shut up! Oh, I'm sorry, I'm, I know what time it is. Come get it. Baby, please, I'm sorry. I, I, I. Get it! What's next? What's next? You want me to do it? No. No, baby, I. I hey, 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 hey. Who 
the series, so it just suggested that I keep my fingernail pointing. Sometimes I wonder if Stan would Richard was really that bad. <laughs> Okay, fine. I miss her. All right, I, I, I miss her. Me without her is like a like a cell phone without the battery. All right, I, I've lost all my power. If I don't get some help, I know what's going to happen next. You know what's going to happen next. If I hunt her down, I'll find somebody new, and I'll start all over. Start all over. That's too much like quitting. And Richard Davis, baby, you know I ain't gonna quit. Uh -uh. I've never got too much into those uh, uh, the gangster movies, right? It, but, but there's this one that I like, uh, 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 Scarface, my cat, Tony Montana, Tony Montana, he's sitting there, he's like, it's okay, it's not out, it's just your back. <laughs> yeah, I got people everywhere I need them to be. So I kept tabs on Michelle. Michelle in the survival, she's a cat woman. I made sure of that. Drop-in centers, hospitals, clinics, it don't matter. In fact, a friend of ours said she was going over to a concert. Walked right past Michelle. Michelle didn't even recognize her. Said Michelle looked sickly and reeked of alcohol. Bro, alcohol? She could have stayed here and got drunk with me. But it was to be a drunk. Being black, being homeless, being a woman, that was enough. Constantly fighting with elements, food, every meal depending on what I could find in the trash. You know, police, they don't like us. They said we're a pain in their backside. We passed out on the street trucks. <coughs> and when the shelters are full, where do they take us? The hospital. Maybe to a secluded side street. To jail. I mean, jail's good, right? At least I have a cop in three meals. <coughs> the courts really, really hate us. They say we tie up their dockets with menial things like trespassing or loitering, begging. You know, and that we don't have money for fines. <coughs> oh. They say we stink up the court too. So I tried. I, mean, I, I tried to stop drinking. But whenever I did, I just would get the shakes and I would feel so sick. And I, I remember this one night I had kind of like passed out over by a, this music hall. And uh, this uppity woman <laughs> leaving the symphony. She, comes out and she looks at me. Then she dials 911 before jumping into her luxury automobile and taking off. Isn't that nice? So they pick me up. And they take me to emergency and I, they say I, I'm having alcohol withdrawal. God, I was so sick. I just, so the doctor comes in. And he does this once over and he's like, how do you feel? Really? How do I feel? I feel dead. I feel like I shouldn't be here at all. And of course, those comments sent me straight to the psych ward. <laughs> but you know, hey, I'm like, it, it couldn't get any worse than this, right? Next day, they send me up for, a, I guess, a routine checkup. And they find a lump. My breath. Yep. Got cancer. I'm like, hey, you know, at least, at least I'm here. I'm getting medical treatment, right? I'm, I I can watch TV whenever I want to. And I've got food. I'm safe. So after a while, my body. My body might have rejected the treatment. My organs started shutting down. They had to take my 
sick and dying, God. Michelle, why? You hurt me. Bridget, we had. We had everything. And then you turned into this monster. I mean, you were smothering me. You were, you were constantly accusing me. I smothered her. I smothered her with my jealousy. You got you to do stop. Why didn't you stop? I was looking at the clock. And when I knew it was time for you to come home, I had to prepare myself mentally, specifically, for your beating. I beat her. I, I, I beat her, and, and, and I cut her off from her, her family and her, and her friends, and she, she was afraid. I was so afraid. I didn't have any choices. I didn't. I could run or I could die. So I ran. And Richard, in my running, I was raped. I was molested and I was impregnated. All because I was running from you. She ran. And she ran and she kept running until she couldn't run anymore. This leaving my wife in the hospital. It was like a death sentence for me. I mean, why should I live, right? Why she lay there sick and dying, and I know that I'm partially responsible for her condition. How could she even have the heart to want to speak to a loser, to an, to an abuser like me? She called me close. She mumbled that she loved me. And then she said, I prayed. I prayed that I could see you one more time. Mm. That I could see the Richard that I know, that I knew, the Richard that I love. Can you be a baby, please? Can you, can you tell the world about our story? I just, I think they can tell somebody else. And when I leave, But I want you to cry out because of me. I want to witness the beginning of your atonement, Richard. I'm going to pray. Baby, I'm going to pray. Until I take my last breath. That you can return to the man that I love. Baby, today, I just want to see you. I, I, I just want to see you. somebody who's about to die. To give the person that abused me. With my wife's last breath, she asked me to make her die. She died. She died on March 21st. She was 31 years old. And ironically, that was the uh, first day of spring that year. The most beautiful season 
in the whole year. I promised my wife that I would write a letter of atonement. Then I would share our story with anyone who would listen. So in honor of my wife, bear with me, please. Okay. Dear Michelle, <coughs> I pray and I pray to God for forgiveness for the sins that I committed. Now, I know this letter can't bring you back to your family or your, your friends who you so love. This letter is an apology for the abuse I brought in your life. I share this as part of my recovery not to offend again. To encourage other men who are abusers to stop now. Yeah. Michelle, women like you are the most precious and delicate human being. That's all right. <laughs> on earth. And loving partners is given a chance. They are not meant to be abused verbally, mentally, emotionally, physically, or sexually. What gives us the right to torment or batter anyone? Especially the one. <laughs> Especially the ones who have our children. <sighs> and there you go, Michelle, you did nothing to deserve what you got to be. And I apologize to our women. For all the men who don't have the courage. Sad, I'm sorry. Uh -huh. <laughs> I offer this letter of atonement to all men who would have the willingness to apologize. I mean, if there be a man, any man who is the sound of my voice who can hear these words, please join me today. I mean, please make amends to the person that you have abused. We can, brothers, we can just call it, we can just call it a rite of passage for abusers, right? Now, I ain't gonna tell you how to apologize, man. That's your business. But God is saying I'm sorry. They say I'm sorry means not going back and putting your hand on the gear. But nobody else. So, baby, this baby. The reason why I'm here today is that we can stop hurting, start healing, and start loving. Thank you.